Hi uh, everyone, Richard Edmonds here from Denver Central, and I'm joined by Glenn Edwards, who is going to walk us through his Spectrum app. So take it away, please. Okay. Yeah, I've uh, been developing a, uh, a ZX Spectrum emulator over probably the last three months. It's called Metro Spec. Probably a bit of a take on re retro spec, retro gaming. But there it is. There you can see the live tile. And in a minute, that will flip over. You can see the last game I played was Manic Miner. Um, also, before I get into the application, you can see I have these two tiles here have the ability to pin your favourite games to the start screen. they flip over, give you statistics about how many times you've played. So if we go back to Metro Spec itself and let's load it up. Uh, and this is probably about, well, maybe about two or three days away from going into the beta test marketplace, I hope. And then probably have it there for about a week and then uh, hopefully get a full launch shortly after that. So maybe two weeks or so. And we'll of course keep you updated with any information regarding the app. Okay, so here's the start screen. I tried to mimic the uh, Windows Phone start screen in, <laughs> in some respect, but uh, successfully. This, well. Yeah, this icon here. If you if you're that way inclined, you can actually code in Spectrum Basic uh, using the old virtual rubber keyboard as the Spectrum had. Nice. Here you can choose your hardware. So you can choose a ZX Spectrum 48K or 16K or Spectrum Plus. Play your last game. Go to the game list. Import from SkyDrive or web. Look at the. I'll just go against this. If you want to know about Sinclair, you can look at that. If you want to know about the Spectrum itself, you, know, you can look at that. So four, come out there. And if you want to about screen, you might find a little Easter egg, Easter egg in the about screen. Let's just say that. So you find, ah. you find that out for yourself. So let's go into the more important thing, the actual game list. Now, here's the list of games. I've, I've imported quite a few games from SkyDrive. <laughs> this app won't come with these games. It will come with a selection of homebrew games. Um, if you want to pull in your favourite specy games, then um, I'll point you in the right direction in the application if you go to the bounce screen. But uh, yeah, here's a big list of applications, as you can see. Quite a few, but if we go to the jump list, using Telerik rag controls here. Quite a few. Quite, quite a few. But if I go to one of the ones I like playing, was Attic Attack. Oh, sorry, I should show. Got recent, most recently played games. It shows you the last time, number of times played, last, uh, last played. Uh, dates, you got your favourites, you can flag things as favourites, so if I just quickly go back. Right. So if, you, yeah. so if you go here, for instance, I can hold and you can play the game, edit it, add to favourites, pin start or delete it, let's quickly show edit, why not? So when you import a game by default, it doesn't contain, obviously, the genre, the publisher, the developer, or you've released. You can go in and add that yourself. I'm going to add in, it's not that present, but I might add it in before release, I might add it in after, and then that update, but the ability to export that. So should something happen to your phone, or you want to install it on a new phone, you'll have the information at hand, you can import that, that uh, metadata and pull that information in. Yeah. So once you input this data uh, for each game, if you, if you uh, want to take the time to do that, <laughs> Then, a lot of free time on your hands. Yeah, then so yeah, favorites, flag things as favorites by right clicking. There's another way to do that, I'll show you in a minute. But here you have a genre, so you've got different genres. If I tap on the group headache, so you've got different genres there. So isometric games. Yeah, nice. some of you from Spectrum days may recognize those. Publishers, again, you know, same thing. If you want to a particular publisher from a developer or year of release. I'm going to add in a new one, which I thought about this morning, which is most played, because I report keep statistics about how often you play games. So I'm going to add in most played into there. Now let's uh, let's actually go into a game. So choose the Attic Attack. And the game is all in X and A. Yep, the, every, the UI you've seen so far is all Silverlight, but it is an Silverlight X and A hybrid okay, uh, application. But everything so far is Silverlight, but the actual emulation itself is X and A with silver light controls overlaid on top. Um, it's the easiest way to do it. It's just doing pure X and A for a UI is not pleasant. So this is the game detail screen. Come in here. You can see, or maybe not in the video, I've never played Attic Attack. I have actually, but for this demo I haven't. Time played none. Played for a number of days, hours, and seconds. That's like a cumulative total. I'm going to use that for the most played, um, or maybe the times played. But is yeah. there a way to reset that? Um, no, at present not. Maybe I'll add that. Maybe I'll add that. Um, you see on the application bar down here, got some icons here. Play. Remove from favourites because it's already in my favourites list. But if it, if it wasn't, you can add to favourites and use that toggle button there to do that. Pin to start. I can't pin this to the start because I've never played it. 
you have to have played the game to finish start because until you play it, you don't have a snapshot. You don't have a screen in it, so it would look very unpleasant on your start screen. Um, home, that's really because the secondary pin tile, so if I pin that to connect to my start screen, which I'll do in a minute, it brings you back here, so you need a home icon to get back to the start screen in Metro spec in order to play other games and so forth. But again, from here I can edit, delete, I can save a screenshot to my pictures library, let's do that now. Tap. That's done. Don't get any confirmation, maybe I should do that. Share, currently not implemented, but that will share to Facebook and say, oh, I don't know, some message about I'm playing Attic Attack. Now, save state support. Uh, in the paid for version, which would be 79p on the marketplace, you can have up to 10 save states. You may not want that many, but 10 save states. In the free version, which would be ad supported with ads in, you'll only get three save states. Um, in this screen, you can do. Uh, I need to play the game first, actually. Let's just play the game quickly. Right. The controls you see here are rudimentary uh, controls. They will change in the next day or so before release, but it's, it works. So, there's the game. Keyboard, Kempson joystick cursor. A lot of Spectrum games um, use Kempson joysticks. Metro Specs supports Kempson joystick by default. All these controls here are maps of Kempson joysticks. So, up, down, left, right, and zero, this button over here for fire. If you so need, um, you can actually configure the controls per game and it remembers that. So, if you need like Q and Z for up and down and whatever, you can, you can configure controls per game. It's so, highly customizable. Well. Yeah. So, if I. Press. I'm going to use. I'm actually using a cursor joystick, and I'm going to be a wizard in there, and I'm going to start the game. So here's the game. So I'm not going to play it very much, but just to show you, it does work. So down we go. Let's maybe kill a few enemies here. Let's wait for them to appear. There they come. Let's kill a few enemies. Let's run away. <laughs> you know. Let's uh, go through here. And you know, you can see it's working. It's fine. Frame rate's good. Um, on a first-gen device like this, this is actually an Omnia Seven. You may need to. It's very intensive on the uh, CPU. So you may need to turn off sound, lower the sound quality, or reduce the frame rate. On a Gen 2 device like a Nokia Lumia 800, which I also have, um, it actually works fine as is. You don't need to change anything. Um, so you get full frame rate, full quality sound, everything. So everything's set at maximum to begin with. Yeah. So if I turn it that way, landscape mode, fully supported, all the, everything reorients. Okay, brilliant. Yeah. If you're um, you set up a right-handed configuration, but if you're left-handed, there you go. Nice. Yeah, so I'm right-handed, so we'll, oops, so we'll have that back how was. If there's, I'm going to die now because I'm not playing the game, <laughs> but if, there, if you want to pause it, press pause. Obviously, if you leave the application and come back, it will be paused, so you don't die as soon as you come back into the game. If there's a game, it's a computer, it's not a console, it's start, select, A, B, C, D, or whatever. You know, different games have different controls. So if there's a special key that you haven't mapped to one of the touch controls down the bottom, mm -hmm. special key you need to press for that particular game, then you can always bring up the virtual spectrum keyboard. That also works in landscape mode. So you can press the key and it will take that action in the game as if you press that key. So, you know, different game, depending on the game, you may require different controls. Press the back key to exit. Come here. As you can see, it's remembered the uh, save state there, the screenshot. If we go back to the main screen, that's where I was. Um, sorry, I should have said you press play, you can tap to play. So you've got save state, save state management, it's supported, so if I tap this icon, you get it. That's copy, and I want to paste it down there. Paste. If I want to copy it from there, paste it down there. there. And these states can be exported to... And yes, these states, if I tap on this key here, get it. Maybe I need to increase the size of those controls. <laughs> but it takes you to SkyDrive. This is the import and export screen, which I'll show you in a minute. But it's sign in SkyDrive. I'm not doing it, I might have to type in my password. <laughs> I might do. Um, we can edit. Yeah. But you come in here, sign in SkyDrive, go through the standard live SDK sign up process. MetroSpec will ask for read and write access to your SkyDrive. Don't worry about that. It's because it supports exporting to your SkyDrive Sky um, folders. The reason I support export is you can play a game on here, export the save state to your SkyDrive, get your other favorite emulator on your PC or your Mac or, dare I say, an iPhone or Android, <laughs> and continue your game. Whether or not you can re-export your save state from that emulator is another matter, but <laughs> I didn't see what, you know, why not? Yeah. Um, let's actually, let's start SkyDrive, because of the export requirement. Um, so this is my SkyDrive, not a lot here, but you can see, I'm using a jump list, so if you had a lot of folders, you can easily jump around, but you'll see the, use the usefulness of the um, 
jump list in a minute, the rad, rad jump list from Telerik. And you're making use of the Telerik controls? Oh, it, throughout, yeah. yeah. The rad text box, the watermark text box, this rad jump list, rad data bound list. So it's pulled in all my data from SkyDrive now. If I tap the jump list, as you can see, I have a full house. <laughs> so if I go to um, in here, what? Well, I need to, I need to fix the uh, trimming of the text. I don't know why it's doing that. But that's it the other day. But let's let's pull in Robin of the Wood. So you can tap over here, and I have checkbox for. If you want to tap on a header, you see a visual error there. I need to fix. But if you tap on a header, oh, header there. I must have tapped on it. So if I tap on there, you can put everything that begins with R if you so wish, but let's not do that. So let's pull in Robin of the Woods, Riker, um, Short Circuit, I'm not going to pull in too many, so I'd, let's just do that. Right, so I'm going to pull in all the ones I've checked. Yep. If you, don't, you don't have to use check boxes, you can just select an individual one and import one single one. So import, press the button, flick across the downloads, there you go, boom. And remaining downloads 5, 3, 2, 1, done. All those games are now in my game list. So I can go in there, play those games, annotate the metadata in your publisher, year of release, and, and uh, so forth. So there's SkyDrive, still there. And of course you get a tick feedback saying which games you've already got. Yes. Cool. Um, and in here, if you set up your own web server or you have the URL of a game <laughs> image on a website, you can put it in here and import direct from HTTP. But I think most people probably use their SkyDrive account. So let's come out of there. So now back into the screen. Controls, as I said, different games have different controls. Most support Kempson joystick, I recommend you use Kempson joystick if you can. But if it doesn't, you can come in here and you can actually go, well, I don't want up to be key seven on the spectrum keyboard. Tap it. What key would you like to be? I want it to be a, a G. There we are, so you can now see it's, it's a G. So I can remap any of these controls to any key on the Spectrum keyboard. Uh, and that's remember per game that's persisted, it doesn't forget that. Unless you run install me up. Uh, Pokes, I'm going to leave that as a coming soon feature. Pokes is basically Spectrum terminology for cheats. Um, basically a poke was you poked memory with a particular memory address with a particular byte value. To give yourself infinite lives, you know, uh, and so forth. Yeah. 99 lives, never die. <laughs> invulnerable, whatever. I'll leave that to coming soon. It's not hard to do, but you know, I've worked hard on this application now and I want to get it out there and I'll leave that for another day. Um, this bottom panel shows you last play, time to play, play for, and the size of the app it's taking up on your device. It is zipped, it is compressed. Um, games that you can import, uh, currently it supports Z80 and SMA snapshot formats only. Um, they can be, if you if you so wish, they can be zip, pre-zip, rad, tard, g-zip, um, many other, seven zip, many other compression formats. But if you don't supply it zip, I'll, I'll zip it for you before I store it in isolated storage. Um, let's pin this to the start screen. So press the pin button. There it is, down there. But I'm going to play Manic Miner instead. So I tap my secondary tile for Manic Miner. Deep links right into the app. Deep links straight into the app. There we go, straight in. And what's pinned is actually your current save state that you've selected previously. So if I have multiple save states, comes on save state three. Yeah. It, it's always your current save state. It, if you come into the app later, change your save state, that's what the pin will be. Yeah. It's your current save state. So okay, let's come out of that. Um, oops, sorry, that's good. Edit that bit. I meant to go to the pop start screen. Right, let's go to the uh, home screen of Metro Specs. Okay, um, continue last game. There, nothing different there, just make sure you get into that screen. If I want to spec program a spectrum, as I mentioned, um, if you that way inclined, yep. you come in here, you get no games are loaded, no snaps are loaded, you get as the spectrum is when it boots up. So you come in here, and it, it might be a bit hard to program that from that view, but if I start to type, uh, you see, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not actually programming very much here, I'm just typing random controls. And that is you. But that's Spectrum Basic, if you want to start pro programming on the Spectrum, 
You know, I'm typing here, you can see the keys come out as I type. Yep. Spectrum Basic uh, is quite interesting, but uh, if you want to know more about that, look on the internet.